This is Ghana, a small nation located 300 miles north of the equator in West Africa. They boast a population of nearly 27 million and the birthplace to one current NFL player, Detroit Lions, Zekiel Ziggy Ansa. This is a kid from Africa, you know, who knew nothing about the game. The main question is, what are the odds? Every year, Ziggy makes a 6,000-mile trek from Detroit to where he grew up, in the Ghanaian capital of Accra. I was born and raised in Ghana, and um, one thing that I've learned growing up was never to forget my roots. Long before his days at BYU and in the NFL, Ziggy's journey began at the Presbyterian Boys Secondary School, better known as Presec. I came to school out here uh, for high school for three years, from 2004 to 2007. So this was like a food court. I'm about to go see a few of them that I used to eat over at. Uh, Mama Tess was a popular one for me, so I'm about to go greet her real quick. What <laughs> you say? Long time no see. You know, graduating in 2007, uh, you know, this is going to be our 10th anniversary. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that they, they actually allowed me to be able to put up the camp here. I just couldn't think of anywhere else to do it. On his most recent trip, in July, he returned to host his first American football camp in a country where soccer is king. How many of you know who a quarterback is? Who's a quarterback? The one that throws the ball, okay. Catch it, eyes on the ball. Go. Oh, that's too high, that's my fault. So how much knowledge do they really have of American football? That's what the problem is. At some point, you know, like, you like throw the ball, the ball falls down to catch it and pass it like it's, it's rugby. And then I, I just keep screaming in the mic. I'm like, no, you can't throw. And uh, you can't throw it when the ball drops, you know. But at the end of the day, I was like, you know what? Let's, let's just have fun with it, you know? It's not that serious. <laughs> had a little cultural section uh, where they were playing the drums and the local music and uh, you know I just joined in. You know you just see the joy and the um, enthusiasm that was in their eyes. That is what the African culture brings to you. There's just so much joy and happiness. Between the sips of fresh coconut water and smiles under the bright African sunshine, the impact of his efforts for the youth of Accra dawned on Ziggy. Most of the kids didn't have no shoes on. I, I, don't, I don't even know how to express how I felt. What do you remember about the expressions on their faces and the look in their eyes when they got these new pair of cleats or shoes from you? When uh, it was time for them to come pick out the shoes and the cleats, um, I thought that they would come take the cleats, you know, but uh, most of them picked out the shoes. Why do you think that was? Because they didn't have any, you know. They knew that they could use the shoes every single day. It was a really humbling experience for me. I know a lot of these kids have dreams. You know, it doesn't have to be you being a football player, a basketball player. Even if you want to be a doctor or, or an accountant, you know, they can do whatever they want to do. One thing I always tell myself is that I can't save the whole world, but uh, if I'm able to change the life of one kid, just one, I would be happy. <laughs>